start is just you told me you made your place kitchen and kind of give us a breakdown on Spencer and, and Lopez and you said three are back there too, right? Yeah, all three of them are uh, are competing. All three of them are getting reps right now. Uh, rolling with Spencer with the ones, but obviously that's uh, um, a fluid situation, you know. So we're in a production business. Uh, by the end of camp, we're gonna look at the numbers, uh, and whoever's the best dude is gonna get that job. We got kickoff. Kickoff. So we haven't done uh, team kickoffs yet. We've just done some some talking on that. Um, but Monday is gonna be a big day for that. What do you like about Spencer? A lot. Uh, my, the biggest thing is that he's not uh, like a typical kicker from what most people think of as a, as a kicker and a specialist. Like he is a very competitive young man. He's a multi-sport athlete, uh, super dialed into his craft, does not get bored or bogged down with me wanting to watch more film with him. Uh, he's definitely all about his craft. So I think just, you know, young, hungry, tough, grimy, local kid that's kicked in this, this weather that we have up here. Um, I mean, I, I love that whole room, but, but he, he's going to be special. Obviously, Freehill had the, the issues with his leg last year. Is that all behind him now? Yes, it is. And you can tell, you know, if you look at that last half of the season, you know, he goes two for two at Michigan. You know, we hit three, three or four against that, that uh, red and white team on that other side. <laughs> uh, you know, he, he, he really came back that, that last half. Um, but, you know, in that room, every year is new. You know, every year, every, every year is new. Everybody's up. Um, Competition breeds excellence, and so that's what we're going to have every single day in there. But yeah, but he is he is healthy from that, and uh, and he's got a, a good mindset right now. Bringing two long snappers through the portal, which you don't see very often. No. We'll talk about the competition that, that Nick and Claude have Yeah, created. the wild times we live in, right? <laughs> so uh, obviously, new uh, when this, this multi-second Nick got in the in the portal, looked him up, saw him. Obviously, uh, I have a relationship with the special teams coordinator for the Bills. His head coach is the one that gave him the scholarship you know, William and Mary. And so there's a little bit of connection, watched him, loved him. He's a bulldog. Uh, I'll tell you what, there's three, there's three reps that, that got him here. The first rep is, uh, it's against a team that they were playing. The guy bombs it down. Um, and he's kind of tossing with this guy the whole way down, like just a little pit bull all the way down the hash, goes to the sideline, love it. Okay, next play down, uh, the ball bounces out and goes out of bounds. And he turns around and it looks like he's dog cussing somebody, but he's giving all these props to his punter. So like, awesome, loves up his teammates, super intense. And then the last one goes down and uh, they down it on the one, right? And so some guy tips it, it barely hits right there. Then this other cat comes in, grabs it, they down it. So everybody mugs that second guy, right? But the guy who made the play, that first guy down that touched it, you see Nick sprint right to him. And I mean, he about tackled him in the end zone. And I thought, yes, great at his skill. Hyper attention to detail, violent, loves the action, loves his teammates, just an enthusiastic little dude. And like, if you're playing snap and you're, and you're got that mentality, like you're gonna fit in just fine here with me. Uh, the other guy, Claude, you know, we have this camp and I, and I keep saying it, our specialist camp is not a doggone uh, fundraiser. It's not a money maker for us. We do go, we have a lot of kids that come to it, but we're there to pull talent out of it. Um, I know the guy that Claude snaps for privately um, I've had one of his snappers at a different school, so I know the background that he comes from. Um, and he's just kind of a quiet, blue-collar kid. Uh, did well at camp. He's done well here. Tell us about your punter, too. Uh, interesting path for him and maybe how you plan to use him. Yeah, so we've got two here, obviously, Bennett. And then uh, we, got our, we got our Aussie, right, Keelan. And uh, both of them competing at a high level. You know, again, best man gets a job. But... But Keelan is, uh, I've got a relationship with his coaches back in Australia. Uh, again, this room is different now. It is a competitive room. Uh, he's a super serious dude, uh, cares about his training. Bro loves him in the weight room. That should say something about him. You know what I'm saying? Um, he can, he, he's got a lot of clubs in his bag with that kick of his, um, and he's self-motivated. I can coach him really, really hard. He matches my intensity. He matches my attention to detail. Uh, Good leader in the room, just a great kid, and uh, you know if his golf game keeps getting better, he's going to be a heck of a golfer too. <laughs> How valuable is it when you're a special teams coordinator? That connection with Australia, just, you know, you never know when you're going to find an Aussie punter. Yeah, um, and obviously you've had two of them back to back. Yeah, and for me, like, I just love talent, right? So like, it, it's Aussie, it's US, it's just the talent. I love talent, but those kids grow up playing, you know, Australian rules football. They get used to running around and kicking, and if you look at like the last top punters in the country the last 10 years 
many of them are from that background. Um, but you know, they're a little bit older. They, uh, they have that background, especially if they're from that, the, the pro kick world. You know, I have a tight relationship with those guys. I know they're well coached. Um, I know that they coach them very, very hard. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you know, they're just a bunch of a great bunch of dudes. I to still sort out in the return game. Yeah. Where are you at there? Uh, I don't know why they have me got me talk to you guys so early in camp because it's <laughs> like I said it in spring. I'm like, oh, it's day two. Now I'm like, okay, well now it's day three. Um, obviously, I love our talent. We have a ton of them. Uh, I mean, you see the lines at the beginning of practice. There's, you know, 20 of them in the punt line, 20 of them in the kickoff line, and they're going back and forth. So now it's time to start whittling it down. Um, young guys, old guys, veterans. And I'm going to say this too. Everyone keeps talking about it with the returners. I will say this. So most respected people in special teams, you look at like Beamer Ball, had starters on offense and defense as returners. You look at guys like Pete Lembo, starters at offense and defense as returners. You guys like uh, like – LeVar in Iowa, right? Heck of a special teams coach. Like, number one defensive player was a returner. So we're going to put our best player back there, and it might be a freshman, it might be a junior, it might be a six-year senior. But the best dude that gives us a chance to get a free first down or more or be explosive back there, we're going to put him back there, and he's going he's gonna to try and help us win. I know you guys kind of had a little team bonding. Uh, I think it was last week. I don't yeah. know if it was at your house. I was on the simulator. Oh, Just, yeah. Can you talk about that camaraderie that you guys have in the group? Despite yeah. Despite all this competition. Yeah, so I'm from the other side of the train track, so uh, I can't afford a $30,000 golf simulator. So I found uh, bits and pieces of ways to make one, and it is unbelievable. And uh, uh, I don't know that it's helped me with my golf game, but it sure is fun having the boys over. Uh, yeah, it's one of those things, man. Uh, you know, this game is hard, and it should be. That's what makes it so so beautiful and so awesome uh but you better have a relationship with your guys especially if you're going to coach like i coach my guys super hard so i better uh through my actions off the field uh get permission to coach them that way you know what i'm saying um i'm going to hold them to a high standard they tell me they want to they want to compete at this level i'm going to hold them to that level um and so it, it is just as important for me count the reps and coach them up an individual to uh to have them over man have some fellowship cook them a meal where it's not a catered meal or, or a calf meal although that new calf we have is unbelievable um but you know what i'm saying like a home cooked meal they get to see me you know messing with my son and, and swinging at the golf balls at the golf simulator and just talking trash and having a good time outside of outside of the lines and then when we get in the lines now we have that relationship it's kind of like having uh you know your, your younger brothers or something you get you get permission to kind of hammer them a little bit and uh, and they respond because everything's out of love right and everything's out of hey we all want to get to where we want to get we want to chase and win championships so that's the standard I'm, you hold me to that standard as your coach i'm gonna hold you to that standard as a player RJ lopez uh, was kicking some big games i'm guessing yeah. you just never have enough of those guys in the roster, right yeah i think one of the uh one of the benefits with him is exactly that like he's a guy that's done it so sometimes when you reach into the portal especially in the specialist world you're getting guys that maybe were really good but that like top guys is, is holding on so they're trying to go somewhere and get playing time well this cat's had playing time right and so uh the big thing for him is to take his game to another level stay consistent you know and dance up all around the yard when it's kickoffs and compete like heck when it's field goal time